Welcome to our session. As I mentioned, my name is Jen Higginbotham. I'm with the Indianapolis Metropolitan Trans Indianapolis Metropolitan Transportation <laughs> Metropolitan Planning Organization. Um, we are a regional organization. We receive federal funding uh, that we are able to then um, use to help local communities implement uh, transportation projects throughout the region. And those can range from uh, bikeway projects, uh, pedestrian projects, roadway projects. We do um, some fairly, we do help fund some fairly large projects, um, a lot of roundabouts and all sorts of things like that, transit. So uh, today what I'm here to talk to you about is our regional freight plan update. The purpose of the regional freight plan, um, we wanted to identify some needs um, for the region. We wanted to prioritize some infrastructure improvements. We wanted to develop some policy recommendations and enhance the freight corridors and just in general enhance freight movement and mobility in central Indiana. The MPO does have a main core document. It's called the Metropolitan Transportation Plan. This document is updated roughly every four years, and it does include quite a few uh, goals, policies, objectives uh, to help build out the transportation system in central Indiana in a way uh, that works for a lot of um, purposes, including moving both people and goods. Uh, within that Metropolitan Transportation Plan, we have a few um, recommendations that link up pretty well with the intentions that we have for the regional freight plan. These include implementing strategies to address congestion, um, supporting economic mobility for residents, ensuring efficient movement of freight and goods, improving system-wide safety, um, preserving and enhancing the existing system, so the existing infrastructure, and minimizing environmental impacts of the transportation system. These sync up pretty well with what we're looking at in the freight plan. Um, and I do want to mention as we get into this that we do have a project website that we have been using to uh, put it, there is a schedule of milestones on that website so that we can update people with where we're at in the process. In addition, that's where you'll find the plan that is currently out for public involvement or public comment um, through July 26th. Uh, that plan is right there at the top of the page. If you go to indympo.org slash freight, you will find all of that information, including some summaries of uh, previous portions and pieces of the plan that we created as we were moving through the process. Some of the key components of the regional freight plan include an industry assessment, um, a SWOT analysis, and I'll explain what that is when I get to it, um, identifying issues and prioritizing uh, improvements, and uh, providing recommendations and some performance measures that we can use to um, keep tabs on how things are changing. Starting with the industry assessment, um, we did take a multimodal approach for looking at all of the different forms of freight movement in our region. So we looked at the road system. We have quite a bit of mileage in central Indiana, 370 miles of interstate, 140 miles of highways, and 190 miles of state highways, not including all the local mileage that we, we have. Um, we looked at our, rate, our rail system. Uh, we looked at the air cargo, net, car, air cargo network, including the international, Indianapolis International Airport and many of the smaller regional airports that exist in central Indiana. And we looked at the pipeline system. There are, there's a lot of pipelines carrying product through central Indiana. Um, Starting with some of the data that we analyzed, we looked at freight-related employment and where industries are located. And when you're talking about freight as a topic of conversation, uh, it really is relevant to all of central Indiana. You can see on the maps on the screen that there are freight-related jobs all over the region, um, going all the way up to Westfield on the north, Franklin on the south, Greenfield to the east, and Danville to the west. Um, there are jobs all over the region in freight-related industries, and freight-related businesses are located throughout the region as well. Uh, when we look at some of that freight-related employment um, on the heat map that we've created, we can see that freight-related employment tends to be concentrated around the interstate network and the state highway network. Um, 
And this means that we really need to make sure that there's efficient access to the roadway network. When we look at the jobs in particular, we can see that there are uh, several freight reliant industries um, that have a lot of employment that provide a lot of jobs in central Indiana, including manufacturing, transportation, and retail trade. Um, and when you look at all of the freight related industries that provide employment, <clears throat> they make up about 33% of the jobs in Indiana. And some of the industries that contribute the most to the uh, annual GDP <clears throat> include manufacturing and wholesale, wholesale and retail trade. So this really is uh, a, a major issue, um, a major topic to discuss in central Indiana. It does affect all of our lives from, you know, how you get products delivered to you to how the products are delivered to the stores that you shop in and um, how products get delivered through the entire manufacturing chain uh, until they become finished. We looked at uh, roads in central Indiana. Um, one of the main criteria that comes up a lot is looking at the annual average daily traffic. And in particular, this plan looked at both annually, annual average daily traffic of all vehicles, but also in particular, um, truck movement, uh, the daily trips that trucks are taking throughout, throughout the region. And we found that um, there are quite a few corridors that are serving uh, quite a bit of truck movement, including several of our interstates, um, and several of our state highways and uh, U.S. highways. We looked at safety. Uh, we took a look at uh, crash-related data uh, for central Indiana. We found that between 2015 and 2019, there were almost 23,000 crashes that, that involved a truck. Um, 128 of these resulted in deaths, and uh, 30, over 3,500 resulted in serious injuries. Uh, we really broke that down and put them all on a map so that we could see where those were occurring. Um, it makes sense that many of the truck movement, much of the truck movement in our region uh, does use the interstate system and the state highway system. So a lot of those crashes are concentrated on the interstate uh, and state highway system. And we marked the location of all the fatalities. Um, this goes into our assessment of needs later on in the project. We looked at railroads. Um, there are several railroads that cross through central Indiana. Um, and we also looked at crashes occurring uh, that happen due to highway and rail crossing conflict. Um, we saw that between 2014 and 2019, there were about 90 incidents um, at a highway rail crossing. Uh, and of those eight resulted in deaths and 30 resulted in injuries. So we also took a look at those um, mapped those and that contributed to our assessment later on as well. We looked at air cargo. Um, we do have, as I mentioned, the Indianapolis International Airport, but there are also five reliever airports. And we just looked at the, the volume of um, movement. Um, the Indianapolis International Airport does rank as the eighth largest cargo airport in the United States. And we have in uh, Indianapolis, the world's second largest FedEx facility. So there's quite a quite a bit of product moving through central Indiana by air. We also looked at pipelines. There are 13 pipelines that move through the area. Um, these include petroleum, natural gas, hydrocarbon gas liquids, and crude oil. So there's a lot of different product that's moving through those pipelines. And there are some uh, terminals that we identified just as a way of um, identifying what kind of coordination is happening with different freight modes. Moving on into the SWOT analysis, um, the letters in SWOT actually stand for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, this is a good way for us to figure out what the uh, pros are in the region and what the cons are in the region so that we can identify things that we're already strong in to build on and the things that we need to improve to make better. We had several sources of information for this SWOT analysis, including a freight strategy committee that met four times in July and November of last year and March and June of this year. That included um, some uh, representatives of communities in central Indiana, but also some large freight reliant businesses um, and uh, professional organizations um, in the freight industry. We did an online survey. This was a public online survey last November where we asked people to tell us about what their priorities would be for the freight system in central Indiana and also if they had any issues that they wanted to identify on a map. 
Um, we did 11 stakeholder consultations. These were one-on-one -on -one, um, conversations specifically with some major employers or some representatives of professional organizations related to freight um, and some of a couple of our central Indiana communities. We analyzed data. I went through some of that just now at a very high level. Um, some of the data that we looked at, and then we looked at previous studies and plans. So these included comprehensive and transportation plans for many of our local communities, as well as the state, um, the statewide Indiana freight rail plan. Uh, as part of that SWOT analysis, we ended up with uh, several um, goals, recommendations, policies, that kind of thing. So um, these uh, what we identified was that there were four major sections uh, that we wanted to concentrate on for the rest of the plan. These included mobility and goods movement efficiency, freight and economic contribution, safety and system condition, and environmental and community impacts. And under each one of those, so under mobility and goods movement efficiency, we found that there is congestion in the region, but um, when you look at congestion nationwide, uh, we don't really have the kind of severe congestion that other metropolitan areas are dealing with, but it is something for us to keep in mind. Um, the central location of our region is very beneficial for moving um, goods efficiently. And there are some planned and ongoing highway improvement projects that in the medium term can um, improve some of the mobility issues that we are noticing. Um, and there is some work related work zone related congestion, but those will uh, free up once those projects finish. Under freight economic contribution, we have several freight strong freight reliant industries. Um, this is a huge benefit for our region and it is um, growing. We have very fast growth in warehousing and distribution uh, opportunities. So this is, um, I think some of our fastest growing jobs as well. And we have difficulty finding or retaining employees. This is um, an unfortunate setback. Uh, there is a need for um, work, a workforce to support all of these freight related industries. Under freight safety and system condition, we have a relatively well-maintained system, um, but we do have some uh, crashes that are concentrating at intersections and highway interchanges. Um, we have some grade crossing incidents. This is specifically railroad and highway grade crossing incidents that we need to um, look at further and figure out how to address those. And then we have some blocked rail crossings that have been reported by some stakeholders as being uh, an area for concern. Under environmental and community impacts, we have um, some uh, residents and people who responded to our surveys and conversations um, said that there are some trucks traveling on local roads and through residential areas, um, and that will get more in the future. There will be more of that movement in the future. So that's something that we need to consider so that we can make sure that they're not having a negative impact on those neighborhoods. And then there is um, a list of projects in the 2050 Metropolitan Transportation Plan. That's another plan that the Indianapolis Metropolitan Planning Organization um, updates every few years. Uh, that list of projects includes um, several things that will uh, alleviate congestion and therefore uh, has the potential to improve some air quality over the next 30 years. Moving on to identifying issues and prioritizing those issues. Um, we looked at uh, uh, four main areas uh, when we were trying to prioritize uh, the issues that were all identified through the data analysis and the stakeholder feedback and everything else. Um, one is mobility and two factors that we looked at specifically to try to identify um, where those issues existed were um, peak hour delay per mile. That's basically comparing how fast movement is happening, for example, during the hours uh, when there's kind of free flow. So later in the evenings, things like that, um, comparing that to the peak hour, which is um, people typically refer to as rush hour. And then also truck travel time reliability. So this is sort of um, if, a, if a truck is delivering from one area to another area, is it doing it consistently or is there a lot of variability in the time that trip takes um, using a similar route? So um, the next issue is safety. We looked at truck involved crash rates, um, number of truck involved 
injuries and fatalities. I showed you that map earlier. And then we also looked at um, the number of grade crossing and trespassing incidents um, where those resulted in fatal uh, and injurious um, outcomes. For condition and impact, we looked at pavement condition. This is something that can uh, contribute to the reliability and efficiency of freight movement. The, the condition that the pavement is actually in can slow down uh, vehicles if it's in poor condition. And we looked at environmental and community impacts of freight activity, um, the sorts of concerns that we heard from people as we were collecting information. We put all of that into an issues map. Um, all of these issues were geocoded and put in specific locations on the map, and you can see those on the screen. And they fell into those four categories of condition, mobility, safety, and community and environment. And then we identified places where we didn't already have projects proposed that could potentially help address those issues. So uh, for example, in that 2050 Metropolitan Transportation Plan, there is a list of projects um, that will happen in the next 30, that could happen in the next 30 years. And we also have at the MPO a transportation improvement program. And that is a larger list of projects that will happen in the next four years. And so what we have is um, the map of all of the freight issues that were on the last slide. We compared those to the projects that are already funded and programmed. And then we identified the places where there are still a lot of issues, but no projects being proposed that could help alleviate those issues. This is all going to be put into a dashboard, an interactive online dashboard, that um, it will be an interactive map where you can zoom in and click on issues and you can see what um, that issue is. And this will help the cities, towns, and counties of central Indiana. Um, it'll give them a resource as they're looking at transportation planning for the future. So now I wanna go into some of the recommendations of the freight plan. Um, one recommendation was, or one thing that we did as part of the freight plan was to update the regional freight network map. This is a map that largely identifies where freight movement is already happening in central Indiana. We have four tiers on the network. Tier one and tier two are primarily interstates and highways where there's a lot of freight movement. They're on the national highway system. And then tier three are more of those local corridors and some of the state highways that have less truck traffic on them, but they're still very important and they connect to major freight centers in the region. And tier four are more of the last mile connectors uh, to get you from some of those um, major areas to the bigger facilities that take you further throughout the country. For this update, we put that out uh, we, we did a data analysis. We added about 50 miles of tier three and about 110 miles on tier four. And we put that out for feedback and comment. And now we have a updated map that is part of this draft uh, regional freight plan. Some of the recommendations include supporting future planning efforts. So for example, I mentioned the uh, map of issues that we then compared to projects that are upcoming and that results in what we call gaps. Uh, they're the projects that don't have um, potential solutions to start working on. And uh, these are things that we wanna keep communicating with our cities, towns, and counties to make sure that uh, they're looking at these resources as they plan future projects. We also wanna continue interactions with the freight stakeholders and the freight strategy committee. In a lot of regions, there will be some sort of freight related committee that meets uh, possibly annually, maybe twice a year. In some of the regions, for example, like Atlanta, they have far more congestion than we have um, during many more hours of the day. And that committee meets uh, roughly monthly to talk about what's going on and what are some things they can start looking into. Is there some technology? Do they uh, invite someone who, um, for example, like maybe somebody from Walmart to talk about their distribution operations so that they can get a get better insight into how all of those things work as they try to come up with some solutions to keep the freight moving through their region. So we're recommending that this group meets um, once or possibly twice a year, uh, depending on the topics at hand, to continue the dialogue. We also have recommendations to improve safety. The uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization did a safety study in 2019 where we located um, several uh, 
high crash intersections. And as part of that, several of those um, intersections also had high truck crash rates. And we wanna make sure that as we're doing future safety studies at the MPO, we include and kind of pull out those truck related crashes specifically. We also wanna incorporate truck volumes and crashes into any other future safety analyses that we do. And we want to identify some of the effective um, grade separation projects that could really help reduce those uh, rail and roadway incidents. In particular, there are, um, there's a line that goes through Greenwood and Franklin that we can start with and uh, think about what to do there. Uh, improving safety is a recommendation, including um, addressing truck staging issues there, uh, you know, in order for a truck to finish its delivery, it has to get to that final delivery point. And sometimes there aren't a lot of good parking opportunities for them to sort of where to put the truck for however many hours it's going to take to unload it. Um, so looking at how you can integrate parking plans um, into overall city, town and county plans, and also how we can uh, collaborate with Indianapolis um, the MPO can collaborate with Indianapolis um, to identify land that could be used for truck staging. Um, this could also be with the rest of the region, just in general, looking for areas where we could have truck staging. Um, addressing mobility issues is one of the recommendations. Um, this is uh, one of the things that we heard from a couple of our communities was on that freight network map where we were identifying where trucks are already going. Um, they wanted us to remove a couple of corridors because those weren't the places they wanted the trucks to go. So that led us to the conclusion that we need to um, maybe help our communities with some guidance on um, how to create sort of like citywide or um, townwide truck route networks and identify the corridors where they do want those trucks to go. Um, it does often take some codification uh, in order to put up the signage and try to restrict truck movement in certain roadways. And maybe that even leads us to having some sort of a region-wide truck route network. These are things we wanna look into. Um, we also wanna make sure that our communities are considering land use compatibility whenever um, they update their local plans. And it's something that we need to consider when we update our metropolitan transportation plan. And then also exploring potential for new technologies. Um, it's sort of a lot of information in the news lately is about the upcoming um, opportunities for autonomous vehicles, um, connected vehicle technologies, uh, meaning vehicles being able to talk to each other electronically and, and give signals about how close they are, how fast they're going. And then there's some uh, intelligent transportation system uh, practices, uh, things like freight signal priority. So, um, you know, al allowing, um, the, the truck movement through the region to happen a little bit more efficiently during certain hours of the day, or uh, having um, signals that, signal timing. So that could be a citywide thing where if you have uh, traffic signals um, that you can sort of uh, control during peak and rush hours to make it so that certain traffic moves more efficiently, that helps the, tran that helps the freight transportation movement system as well. And then finally, we have some recommendations for infrastructure condition and community impacts. Um, so for example, the national highway system, um, we do have several corridors that are on the national highway system in central Indiana, but there are a couple of small segments where we're recommending that those be added to the national highway system. Um, those small segments are uh, both in Indianapolis on the near south side of downtown and also around the Sam, Joan, Jan, Sam Jones Expressway. Um, but there are some roadways on the national highway system throughout the entire region. These are just a couple areas where we're recommending it be added. Um, we also want to make sure that we continue providing information on roadway conditions um, to relevant agencies. That is something that the MPO continues to look at is the condition of roadways and exploring alternative, uh, exploring locations for alternative um, truck fuel. So this could include um, charging infrastructure for elect electric operation or it could be looking at things like natural gas and other alternative truck fuels to um, the typical diesel um, fuel. 
We did recommend a couple of performance measures. These are things that the uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization would continue to monitor. Uh, this includes that truck travel time reliability index, making sure that we're having some consistent movement through the region, looking at the commercial vehicle crash rate, looking at the pavement ratings, which is the condition of pavement, looking at the percentages of bridges in poor condition, and looking at rail crossing incidents. Two of these that have the asterisk, the pavement ratings and bridges in poor condition, these are things that the MPO is already monitoring and um, reviewing data on on a regular basis. So we would be adding three additional areas to continue to monitor. And then to wrap up this presentation, we are in the public comment period for that draft right now. It started on July 13th, it goes through July 26th, and you can find that draft at indiempo.org slash freight. Um, we did have a meeting last night and we have, a meet, we have this meeting right now today. Um, these are our virtual public meetings, but if you would like me to come and do a similar presentation for another organization that you're part of or you wanna pass my information along, um, I'm happy to do that uh, throughout the comment period. And then on August 17th, we will be taking the plan to the MPO's Transportation Policy Committee uh, for their review and approval. And there will be a public hearing at that meeting um, on August 17th. And the dates for those meetings are all on that website at ndmpo.org slash freight. So this is my contact information and I wanna leave that there, but um, I think at this point, uh, I'm going to uh, stop sharing. I can put my information into the chat box in case anyone wants it once I uh, close this window. And then um, I'd like to take some questions if anyone has any. Okay, there we go. <laughs> And I believe you can ask a question by either raising your hand or there is a Q&A box um, that you can put a question into if you uh, would like me to answer anything. All right, well, I'm not seeing any questions. Um, I did put my contact information into the chat box. So if, in, if you would like to follow up with me later, please do so. I would be happy to talk to you at that time. And I think we will go ahead and wrap up this meeting. I wanna thank you again for attending today. I hope that was a good sort of quick overview of what's in the freight plan and, and the purpose of the freight plan. And uh, we will be creating, as I mentioned, an interactive online dashboard that will include all the issue areas and some other information that will be easy to, to find and look up and see what's going on um, that is forthcoming. But I wanna thank you again for coming and I wanna wish you a nice rest of your day.